Hello everyone and welcome to part two of this week's Factorio Space Exploration and Crestorio 2 update on the Lawrence Plays channel. Uh, we're going to go through the rest of the stuff that happened in, the, in last week's stream that didn't involve sort of vulcanite and iridium and so on. So, first thing we're going to take a look at is sorting out the other uh, matter science, and uh, this was this was working quite nicely. I got it working the week before, where I put in some extra machines along here, as I think I think I mentioned. Um, but it turned out I'd forgotten to put limits in on the uh, stations down here. So rather than stopping in loading the matter catalogs at a sensible number, we were just filling it up and filling it up and filling it up. Uh, fortunately, um, I realised before the tra before the system completely filled up. But as it is, we have we have a little bit of an excess of them, and that meant that all of these machines along here were running f absolutely flat out, and all of the matter science production seems to produce huge amounts of scrap as well as you can see here it's also pouring out along the along the belts here um, and that was meaning that the uh, the belt coming up here and leaving this area was jam-packed full that was causing a lot and that was causing quite and that was adding to the uh, general congestion there was a huge amount of miscellaneous scrap trying to get out onto the belts up here uh, some of it was coming over from the um, uh, material science over here because as, as we all know that produces ridiculous amounts of scrap as well um, but also this, this, but this certainly wasn't helping so I went and put in the put in the limits there and that's 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 reduced it a bit but in order to help it uh, continue working a bit better, Tristan's put in some more belt balancing um, in in this area to try and to try and sort of smooth things out a bit, make sure that the way all the all the scrap ends up in the right place. And as you can see, that has allowed us to get through the sort of the uh, the ridiculous backlog we had uh, around here, and things have sort of calmed down a bit now, and um, and the system can, can can once again deal with it all reasonably happily. I also realised, thanks to a a message that someone left on one of the on one of the videos, that these warehouses I had over here on the bus, which, which were previously red warehouses, uh, shouldn't be. They should be set up as green warehouses. And the reason behind this is because. Um, if they're set up, if they're set up as red warehouses, then the uh, the bots when you when you build something will prioritise wherever whichever whichever red storage place is nearest. So, for example, if I built a load of extra belts up over here somewhere, they rather than taking the excess that are in the in in this warehouse down these two warehouses down at the bottom here, they'd come over and grab them from the new supply over here because it's nearer, and that that makes sense for the bots. But it's not what we want to do. We want to be able, we want to be getting rid of the excess that's, that's then all being dumped into the, into these uh, warehouses over here, and so. I've gone through and I've replaced them all with green warehouses, and in theory, that should mean that they'll be they'll be then be treated as all specifically the ones at the bottom will be treated as a higher priority than the ones over over here in the in the in the, in the bus, and therefore should get used up first, and uh, and will allow us to start to pull through some of the get rid of some of the bits and pieces that are down here. And as you can see, we've got we've got lots of things like um, spaceship flooring and drills and and all these sort of things, and it, we just want to make sure that everything gets used up in the right order. I also mentioned last week that we had a lot of stuff just stockpiled in the warehouses at the bottom. And it turns out part of the problem with that was because I'd forgotten to put in this cable across here that links these two together. Um, and therefore this one on the end wasn't linked into the rest of the system and therefore wasn't was and therefore was, wasn't being counted. And so anything that was down in that one was being brought up again. So we had multiple more and more and more of it being brought up. And that meant all the all the warehouses were a bit full. So Tristan sorted that one out by um essentially by cutting by turning off the uh, the inserts across here and then and then using the uh, this belt along here to drain absolutely everything out of the bottom three warehouses and across here and then eventually down into the disposal system here which is taking everything back down to the ground and if we look in here we can see there's, there's still a few loaders in here that haven't been, been got rid of yet but most of it has been now been taken down so that means it's now been recirculated through the systems down on Norvis and hopefully that means we'll then end up using using them up a bit more uh, a bit sooner and rather than stockpiling them up here where we're running out of space we'll stockpile them down on Norvis where hopefully we'll, we'll end up eventually actually getting through them all. This meant we then had enough space for all of the um, the miscellaneous stuff to dribble back down into the bottom three warehouses, and so now this one can be used just for the uh, the aeroframe bulkheads, as you can see here, rather than having a million different things in it like it did before. And if we look in this warehouse, you can see that there's not too much stuff being stockpiled in here. In fact, when we, as, as we start to build more a few more things, I'm sure this will empty quite quickly. The uh, for that uranium ore shouldn't be in there, so a little bit of there is still potential for doing a little bit of tidying up around here and sorting things out and making and sending them away on the uh, or down, down the uh, down the disposal belt as they as they should be. Continuing on with the disposal system, um, the, the we're still waiting for a lot of um, iridium bearings to be made in order to make these uh, in order to make these underground belts. It's a bit ridiculous actually. I, I, I looked at the numbers and it turns out that in order to make one in order to make one purple underground belt, it takes forty superior transport belts. Which each of which takes four heavy bearings. So in order to make one of those, it takes 160 heavy bearings. So it might be worth going through this design, perhaps pulling up and, and then sort of removing some of the excess, the, some of the spare bits and pieces. So, for example, this bit here, we could take out a lot of these straight belts, a lot of these pieces of belt down here. You never know. We might even be able to have this one link straight through to this one down here if, if it was um, if it's if it's long enough. But if we can save a load of pieces of belts over here. 
then it might allow us to have enough to finally get around to building all of these underground belts. And all these, re so all these really short ones are a bit wasteful. But again, I guess the once we've got the uh, supply up and running fast enough, then maybe it won't be a problem. We'll have enough enough resources and enough uh, of these underground belts available that the whole thing should work. Further up north, Tristan's also increased the speed of unloading of these trains. So you can see there are, there are now none li lined up along here. So it looks like we've actually managed to get get through all of the all of the backlog we had. And I think the way he says he's, I think the way he's probably increased the, uh, the the throughput here is by put having two belts running out of each each wagon. I I suspect I can't remember exactly how it was before, but I think that's probably what's, what he's done. He's also increased the amount of the speed we can pull the sand out of this warehouse because we were finding that it was it was backlogging in here quite a lot because well we we're bringing a lot of sand over, particularly from I think it's Big Grid where where we're generating enormous, or was it Taras? One of those generates enormous quantities of sand and so it just clogs the system up a bit. But with the extra belts here and with all of these extra belts running down, like these ones, down, going down to make, make all of this glass, that seems to be enough to get through it all. Uh, and notably, we, we now seem to have not a shortage of glass, um, because this, this warehouse is mostly full, but it's flowing through enough that we are getting through the sand at a decent rate. So, that, so that's nice. It's, it's good to be getting, getting through the resources and not having them all backing up and causing problems. Speaking of backing up and causing problems, it looks like we now have a huge amount of storage space for the uranium ore. Is that because you can't turn uranium ore into landfill? Maybe it is. Yes, uranium ore cannot be turned into landfill, so all we can do with it at the moment is, well, we, we, we could tr just trash it, I suppose. But that, that feels wasteful, to be honest, turning it into landfill would feel wasteful as well. But at the moment, we appear to be just stockpiling enormous quantities of it. Um, and then, I, I, I'm, I'm actually surprised we've not been getting through more of this, because I'm sure I remember from previous space exploration runs that you get through huge amounts of uranium with some of the space sciences. But um, I, we don't seem to be, so we, we, we've got a nice big stockpile of that building up. And this is all this has all come out of the core mining, we just have crazy amounts of it available. It might be because we're not using green ammunition and therefore that's there's no drain on the uh, U238 for that and we're not using nukes very much because in this particular mod pack they're not very good and we're not using nuclear power because we can just bring power down the space elevators from solar so I guess most of the uses for nuclear for, for uranium have gone away and all we're really left with is, is science so that explains why we've got quite so much of it here I guess. It looks like there's been a lot of work going on with the uh, junk disposal, and we're now we're moving on to the train side of it. And it turns out that over here in the spaceport area, we had a train stuck in the in in the uh, in the slot here, and that was because it wasn't getting the battery swapped over properly, uh, because there were we only had battery swap overs like this at one end of the train. So we've now got them at both ends. Things are running much much better. I believe Mark put that in after Tristan went in and discovered what the problem was. Um, and it looks like the, this was specifically the train that was going over to the material science area of the science park up here somewhere. And yes, I, I, oh, here we go. Yeah, the, no, actually, no. Take it back. Yeah, here it, do, it does have um, it, it does have battery changeovers in it as well. Maybe those have been added as well as well to make sure there aren't any more problems. Because yeah, the the train managed to chew through all of its batteries and it ended up getting stuck over here. So yeah, it's a good thing we got that fixed. It turns out it was going round and round endlessly because there weren't any um, any girders or bearings available down on Norvis because we'd run out of um, iridium as as usual, um, and so they were so the train was running round and round in loops trying to find some and bring them up here and just and unable to, and that was how it managed to run through all of its batteries surprisingly quickly. Tristan says he's also messed around with the instructions for the uh, train that bring the the or, the elevator train on Njord, and he's challenging me to work out what's going on with it. Um, so it looks like he's got it set to uh, to leave if it's emptied completely of vulcanite, cryonite, and plastic, and it's full and it's inactive, uh, as it, as it's just happened now apparently. Um, which means it will come up here and then unload and then unload all of the uh, all of the stuff it's brought up with it onto the uh, into in, into the uh, into the spaceship up here as you as you're sort of basically used to and that'll allow it to then fill up with plastic and cryonite and vulcanite all of the all the resources that it needs down on the ground and he's done the thing where you put cable on all of the belts all the way down here which looks ridiculous but never mind in order to get an idea of what's actually in in the in the system so you can tell it when to turn on and off he's also set it to depart if if he gets a signal of, of one of any of these three things and i assume that's going to mean that's going to be set up so if we've run out of the vulcanite or the cryonite or the plastic and there is some up in orbit then the train will come up and get it so let's see if we can let's see if we can prove that Okay, so that appears to be correct so what we've got here we've got a connection going from the warehouse connecting all of the belts down here Except the underground bits, because well, you, you can't, um, and then being connect and then that's hooked into the uh, into the space elevator here with the green cable. At the other end, it comes out of the space elevator, comes down here, and then this combinator is saying for anything, if if there's more than zero of it, then output a one. So if we look at the numbers on it, you can see that it's outputting one of each of the things that we have a supply of up in space. That's being then fed over to the station, over to the train, over to the station over here, allowing it to be fed through to the train. And so, if so, so this means that if it's inactive for a second and this and there is any of any of these three things available up in orbit 
then it will go up to go and get some more of it. So presumably that means Tristan reckons that it, the train is never going to be inactive for more than a second down here, while it's uh, uh, unless there's a problem with the system. So the idea the idea of having the, the having that is so that if the system here stops working, the train will go up to go and get some resources and bring them back down again. But that seems a bit weird. A, a second doesn't seem to be long enough, really. But let's have let's watch it for a moment and see see what happens. Okay, so it's basically full now. So it's, it's ne nearly filled up. It'll get that second of inactivity, which means it's time for, uh, in a moment, which means it's time for it to leave. Look at that. It'll drop down the elevator and then pull into the station down here, where it will unload all of these resources that, it, that have been lo being loaded into it by the uh, up, up top. And whenever there's space to en insert something, because we've emptied a stack, it'll then put in one of the resources from down uh, for, that's being brought from the planet. And so that's that's filling up and emptying in much much the same way that we're very very used to, because we've seen this sort of system running on lots and lots of other um, uh, lots of other planets. Yeah, looking at the rate the supplies seem to be coming through, I can believe that it would it would manage to not be idle for a whole second unless something's gone wrong. So you can you can see here that it's only fractions of a second that it's not that it's um not running for. So yeah, that could that could work. It's, it seems like an, an odd way to set it up, but I can see how I can see that it may it may well work. Um, although if you do, you ever get any sort of slight slowdowns on the um. On the, on the amount that's coming through for any re any reason, you could end up with it, perhaps because there's been a, a bit of a hiccup in the um, in the Holmanite supply, then you could end up with the train going round and round a bit. But that said, if there has been a hiccup, it's probably going to be because we've run out of one of these ingredients. So having the train going up to check to see if there's anything available up there would be quite a good thing. Um, if the spaceship's gone, of course, and hasn't come back bringing more resources, then you could end up going round and round quite a lot, because there'll be nothing to pick up at the bottom. So it'll go up to the top, there'll be nothing to pick up at the top, so it'll come back down again, and it'll go round and round and round forever. Um, um, but as long as as long as we keep up a decent supply of all of the all of the resources it needs up in up in uh, orbit around the planet and uh, down here, and it, it, it's probably going to be okay. I think. Well, uh, I guess we'll wait and see. He's also put in a couple of extra core mine trains on Norvis. Apparently, we weren't bringing the core chunks through fast enough, and so I guess some of the more distant ones were uh, were filling up. And that, that's a copper mine. <laughs> some of the more distant ones were, were filling up and, um, and, and and not and not getting a train out to to, uh, to empty them. But this is the most distant one, I, distant one I could see, and there's only 63 stacks in that warehouse. So yeah, I'd say that's it. I'd say we currently have enough trains. The system seems to be working. And if we look in down here, I I don't know where the core trains go actually when they're uh... oh they go straight off to core mine as soon as they're ready. So yeah, we've got. Um, not too many core trains buffered in here, so I think the system is, yeah, seems to be working reasonably well. I had a mildly unfortunate moment up in, uh, in Norbit where I, I, I flew over here to, uh, to, to do some, I, I can't remember, I can't even remember what I was doing, but I was tinkering with something. So I flew over here and then realised I'd run out of fuel, so I had to, uh, for my jetpack, so I then had to run around a little bit trying to find, uh, trying, trying to get myself in, into one of the um, orange roboport areas in order to get some more brought out to me. And that was a little bit of a wait, but uh, uh, never mind. But one, one of the reasons I came back, back over to Norbit, Norbit was to pick up a plague rocket, which I have now deployed on Talos, and that means this planet is now completely peaceful. Uh, I, that said, there's. Oh no, I was going to say that said there seem to still be a few few out here that haven't been killed yet. But no, that's just because they we haven't rescanned this area with the radar since they're all slaughtered. So this planet is now perfectly peaceful. I don't need to worry about any of the uh, the laser walls or the um. Or technically, I don't need to worry about the uh, the uh, the air purification either because it doesn't matter how polluted the planet gets because there are no biters to get upset by it. Um. And so I also I also swept round and did the repairs out here that were needed. I fixed up this area over here where the, uh, the the glaive beam came through and did rather a lot of damage. That's all sorted and flowing now, and that means we've now got a plentiful supply of the um, of the of the barrel coming in up here and being turned into the into, into all of the uh, turned into beryllium. Uh, I say plentiful supply, the trains do empty very, very quickly, and then we, we end up with all these gaps on here. But, given the amount of beryllium we have over in Norbit, I think, I don't actually care. This is enough to keep the system very, very happy, so I'm not worried. I'm, it, it, it's producing it fast enough, even if the uh, system isn't running absolutely solidly. And if I want to improve it a bit, then it's going to be as, as simple as coming out here, and setting up a few more mines, putting in a few more, and, and, and have a load more trains. Basically what I was saying I need to do on, uh, on Agnea, but doing the same sort of thing out here on Talos. But that said, at the moment, it's absolutely fine. There is more than enough beryllium being generated. If we have a look at the opposite end here, we can what, what will we see with the spaceship. Well, the spaceship is gone. Uh, we have enough here to fill up a spaceship as soon as it arrives. And if we look over in Norbit, we can see that the spaceship has arrived and is trying to unload its beryllium. But we just have so much of it that it hasn't got anywhere to go. So I'd say we're in a really, really good position here. You can see why the beryllium has a completely full uh, bar on the, on the chart down on Norvis. Uh, that's going really, really well. And I think we're doing similarly, yes, yeah, Snowdrop again, we have a full warehouse up here. Uh, we haven't got the full spaceship in as well, but again, we, we've got plenty of, uh, plenty of cryonite available at the moment and plenty of beryllium. We have a couple of small moons where we went out to 
to initially where we, where we, to get the um, to get the initial vulcanite and cryonite from, and this is Taishikuten, which is where the vulcanite was coming from. And we've sort of this this planet has sort of ground to a halt because it was only sending the vulcanite away by delivery cannon, and now we've stopped really using delivery cannons. There's nowhere for these 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 to fire at. Okay, there, technically there is a chest there. We could start it firing at that one, but. Basically, we, we, we've stopped using this one because now we're bringing so much over from Agnea in the spaceships that it's easier to keep building that one up and up and up rather than trying to do any sort of mo make any sort of modifications over here. Um, I'm not... I'm sort of torn about how what how I feel about this, whether I think we should just come in and demolish everything on this planet and take it all away again to save on UPS. For now, we've, we, I've deactivated these um, greenhouses over here, which means they've stopped producing the wood, which means, all of, which means okay, we're still ticking through a little bit of power over here, but mostly the, the, um, the base has just completely gone to sleep. If we look at the power usage over the last, let's say the last 50 hours, we can see we had some core mining running here. Um, there's a bit of oh, the meteor defense installations are using a bit of power, um, but we're now using a lot less power than we have been for quite. Well, actually, I was going to say we've been using a lot less power than we have been for a long time, but actually that's not really true. We've just the system has just sort of be, has been asleep for a very very long time and not really doing very much. So it's yeah, it's it's a bit unnecessary. The hope was that if we if we turn all of this off and the system does actually burn through all the power and then just collapses and stops doing anything that maybe it'll, it'll save on UPS but I don't think I think an idle system like this isn't going to be any different from a system that's idle but be because it doesn't have power so on the other hand maybe we should maybe we should be coming over here with a space elevator and using this as a secondary source of uh, vulcanite but then we'd be using a lot of space elevator cable up uh, when we don't really need to so I think we're probably just going to ignore it and pretend it's not there. Exactly the same is happening over here on Bracket, with the difference that this one has actually finally run out of power, um, presumably because all of the wood has been used up and, uh, and turned into, into electricity. And so this one has just gone completely to sleep as well. Um, you, we've got the same sort of massive free power system up here, and, and again, you can see it's all been switched over to do a different recipe, probably. Uh, yes, the one that requires sand to be put in as well. Uh, it's not got any sand, so it stopped growing trees, so it's shut, shut down. It seems a little bit sad, but... We're not using it, so there's no point. There's no point in keeping it running, really. On the graph, Tristan has sorted out the iron ingots and steel plates, which is iron ingots and steel plates. Yes, yeah, so so we now we can now see we've got full bars of these, and this means this is probably a little bit more accurate now. You can see we've got good amounts of basically everything. We're a little, tiny bit short of copper ingots, but nothing to worry about there. Good amounts of pretty much everything. There's a, a shortage of a shortage of utility science packs actually. I should probably take a look at that and try and work out why. Um, the advanced tech cards as well. There's not not a great deal of those. How many have we, how many have we actually got of each of those? So uh, yeah, 240 advanced tech cards. That is definitely a shortage and 729 of the um, utility science packs. So yeah, those both those both probably need a, a bit of looking at to find out why they're so short. So I'll put that on my to-do list for next time. Um, and then over here, all of the science catalogues we're doing really, really well on. We've got loads of absolutely every every single one of them. Um, and then it's, it's just the exotic materials that are uh, holding us back at the moment. So we've got that got that shortage of vulcanite that I've been talking about. You notice when we looked at uh, in the last video, there were four blips on here. We've now that's now gone back down to zero blips. So there's definitely not enough of that. And the Holmia, Meridium, and Vita, uh, whatever that is, are also very, very short. So we could do, you could do with a bit more of those. But we're working towards it one step at a time, and it's, it's getting gradually better and better. There were some issues with the star probe spaceship, as you can tell by the fact there aren't any star probes on this belt down, uh, star probe data on this belt down here, which has caused the um, interesting. That's caused the um, energy four to come to, to grind to a halt, and it looks like the um, the spaceship doesn't seem to have uh, refilled at the other end. So they're probably so clearly there is still a problem with it, um, and I think Tristan said he'd sorted it out, but I think he only sorted he only said he only dispatched it. He didn't get it to uh, to refill again. So if we look over here. We seem to have a load of, it looks like, actually this has run nicely, we've got a full 10,000 um, star probe data in here, but the spaceship hasn't been told to depart, so we'll need to have a look into that, work out why, um, and this says, if oh it's waiting for 100,000 instead of 10,000, so that should say 10,000, and then we, that should immediately set the spaceship to disappear. So I guess what's happened there is we were, so previously I think we had them coming out to run through more probes um, and decided that was excessive, so we dropped it down to 10 or maybe 5 or even less, uh, but we didn't update the numbers here. I don't know why that wasn't 100,000 though, because we never had it coming out to try and do 100. There isn't room, there just straight up isn't room for that, I don't think. Um, so that was wrong. Maybe maybe I never actually quite finished this and it was all a little bit manual and this is the first time we've run out of the star probe data. Either way, this needs a little bit more fiddling and the asteroid belt data probably needs exactly the same modifications doing as well. The problem is these ships leave so rarely because it takes so long to get through the 10,000 star probe data that we've just acquired that the ships don't go back and forwards often enough for us to really test it and then by the time we've, we've run out of it and it needs to go again, we've kind of forgotten what was going on and so it's, it's all a little bit confusing. But hopefully having had this just fail like it did means we'll now take a look at it and get it, fi get it 
it fixed, so it, it just works properly. And next time it needs to go out, we don't need to faff around with it. Tristan says he's also had to boost the radiation and air data cards by, by just chucking a load of modules in, so that, that's pretty standard. That's uh, I, I guess that is how we would do our, our first boost when we realise we haven't got enough of it. It looks like that's worked because there's now loads and loads of radiation data and the system is backed up. So, yep, that seems to have worked. And before going off and pretending to be Mike all evening, uh, Mark did manage to get the AI cores starting to be built up here. So we've got we've got up to 170 of them so far. Um, these are needed. He, he wanted these for, for specifically for the new Roboport uh, style designs. Um, but I think we're going to need these for a fair number of things. So it looks like this requires the quantum processors, which we've run out of, and then a smattering of biological stuff, which is why it's all being done over here. Including the Emersite crystal. I wonder if that's needed for anything else, or if that's just literally just been brought in for this uh, for these AI cores. I don't see anything else that's using it. So I think yeah, this has this looks like yes, this has just been brought in specifically for the AI cores. But you know, we need it. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm certainly not going to complain about that. Why are we not? Why do we not have any quantum processors? That's an energy science adjacent thing. So I think that yes, they're being made down here. Okay, they are being made, albeit rather slowly. Uh, it look oh it's a holmium cable shortage thing so we've got we've got a full belt of holmium cable flowing in here i'm going to guess that that wasn't flowing before because this seems to be sort of gradually filling the belts up along here so I think, I think it must have stopped flowing before and now it's sort of started again and so we're getting some through. It looks like this is going to be a thing that gets through absolutely phenomenal quantities of this Holmium cable. So hopefully Tristan, oh no, no I was going to say hopefully Tristan set up, set up to request large enough amounts of it. But no, there's the end of it. So we're going to need to increase that quite a lot and, and just ask for significantly more of it at a time so we can keep this system running a bit more constantly. And that'll probably be this shopping list up here. Yeah, so we're asking for four and a half thousand at the moment. Um, to be honest, I think that might need to be taken up to about 20,000. Uh, and that'll allow. That'll mean each time the train comes up, it'll, it'll try and bring more of it up. Maybe the train will be run, and the train will run more often. Try and keep this a bit fuller. Try, try and keep us with a lot more of the uh, holmium cable. And then, fingers crossed, that'll keep everything supplied, and we'll be able to we'll be able to make those processes fast enough to make the AI, make the AI cores. At the moment, we're just trying to fill up this train down here, and there's a long way to go before that's satisfied. And so on to the researches. We've not done a huge amount this time. We've done um, Bot Research 11 and we have Bot Research 12 in progress. So this, well, straight up makes the bots fly faster. I don't know what else you expect me to say about it. Uh, this means that they can, uh, they can. it's a little bit less frustrating when you're waiting for them to build something or waiting for them to bring stuff out to you. Um, I don't know if it gives them extra range as well because I'm still not sure whether the battery power that we've, we upgraded recently, whether that increases the, the um, amount of time they can fly for or the distance they can go. Because if it's an increase on the amount of time they fly for, then that will, then increasing the speed will mean they'll go further. But if it's just, a, if it just increases the distance by a certain amount, then they'll get there sooner and they need to charge so I don't know but we are looking into we're also looking into new and exciting types of robot ports as I was saying with uh, Mark researching building those AI cores uh, which will be able to charge the bots up much more quickly and in larger quantities so hopefully when we do a massive build in the future the bots won't be spending as much time waiting to charge. And so with that uh, very, very small research update, that brings us to the end of the video. So as ever, thank you for watching. As you can probably tell by the fact this video has come out on a Tuesday, there is no Tuesday stream tonight. Uh, this is because I've gone away with work and, uh, you know, l life happened, I'm afraid. Uh, we will, however, be back on Thursday when I sh we shall be playing some more... Uh Space Exploration K2 and carrying on with all the stuff we've been talking about here and, and in the last video. So there's quite a lot of stuff to fix up as you've noticed but uh, I think we should be able to get it all up and running reasonably well uh, without too much difficulty, I hope. Uh, there'll definitely be a video coming out tomorrow as well if you're uh, for non-supporters and hopefully there'll be one for supporters as well which I haven't finished yet but hopefully will have done by then um, and then there'll be the update videos coming out uh, back to the normal Saturday and Monday of next week as well after we've done the stream. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the videos, and uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on all the rest of the content. Thank you for watching again once again, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.